It's fine. We're almost to the holiday break, folks. We are. Hi, welcome back. We're the Book Mavens. I'm Amanda, she's Rachel, and you're joining us for the review of our second Wheel of Decision Fatigue <laughs> book, Mrs. Lattimore's Letter. So if you recall in an earlier episode, Rachel and I were having a very hard time deciding what we wanted to read. And so instead of just really sh stressing about it, because, you know, it's the end of the semester, our brains are just mushy. So we just put them all in a wheel and we, and we spun for them. And so this was actually the third spin. This was Mrs. Lattimore's letter. Go back and watch our previous episode about a spindle splinter and why we had to DNF. Okay, so Mrs. Lattimore's letter was an impulse buy for me. And I was a then, tongue twister every time I try it, and talk about that book. Is. I can't. I can't get it out. <laughs> I think it's because you're thinking Lady Chatterley's lover. I maybe. I I can't say letter. I always it's Miss Lattimore's lover every time and, I and say it. And it. that's it's definitely not <laughs> it's that not. kind of book. <laughs> no, it's kind of a it's a delightful kind of Regency era, era clean romance. It was um, on the shelf of my favorite independent book seller here in town. Um, and if you watched our book haul video, this is the one where like, I don't know if I mentioned it, but like I walked in with a gift card and I didn't even make it past the first shelf, like the newly arrived before I had far exceeded my gift card. Um, and this so is one of the ones that had caught my eye. So it is technically an autographed copy, which that's not why I got it. I just thought it, the story sounded cool. And we were in the midst of our falling for Austin. So I think that's maybe part of the appeal very austin inspired it is do you want like to... to a heavy heavy it, on, it honestly feels like she put <laughs> it's a, like a love letter yeah to jane austen suzanne aileen elaine suzanne Elaine. i'm gonna call you suzanne okay. Okay. suzanne yeah yeah it kind of has like all of the austin storylines like rolled into one <laughs> but you enjoy it it's a nice neat little yeah if you're familiar with austin and all of her works you'll literally be pulling out okay well, that's this character. Yeah. That is this storyline. There's a letter. There's mm -hmm. mis misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. There's miscommunication. Mm -hmm. There's a Reiki character who runs off with someone for money. Mm -hmm. It's like, and the heroine is such a nice mishmash. We were discussing this before we started filming. Yeah. It's like she starts a Marianne and then she becomes an, uh, an Anne. Yep. And then she ends as like. A she ends like a Lizzie Bennet. Yeah, but also having done the right thing, kind of like a Lizzie, I say like a Lizzie Eleanor Cross. Yeah, but Eleanor is never forced to make a decision between two men. That's a good point. But she does wait for, well, that's a good point. Okay, she's going to end on Lizzie. I'll, I'll give it. I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't feel because so there much Because there is Eleanor. that scene where she goes to visit um, his place and she's like, I'm worthy of love. Like, you know, tell, hype, she, she hype talks herself a lot, which I really enjoy. I really enjoy the hype talk. It's kind of funny. It's interesting. So maybe the way it's maybe written. maybe a little bit of that self confidence, perhaps, of Eleanor. Eleanor is a character yeah. who I feel doesn't necessarily see I her. Feel, I feel like Mrs. Lattimore is just very content with herself, which I've. That's how I associate Eleanor. Eleanor is very. But that's more of an Anne. I and for and for me, it's the long suffering part, the kind of being put aside and not and not counted for much. That's the Anne part, and then boom, yeah. Sir Edward arrives. So, Edmund. Edmund. Are we sure? Seriously? Yes. Hold on. Yes. You're thinking Edward because of I Eleanor. am because of the thing. Okay. So here's the Edmund. Here's the short version of what happens. Yeah. So Sophie, our main lead, she mm -hmm. sees at a party something and then decides to help these two different couples avoid unhappiness and yes. she writes an anonymous Matrimony letter. Matrimony disaster. Yeah. She writes an anonymous letter that gets out and is not anonymous for more than like four pages of the book. Yeah. And then. <laughs> it wasn't much of a secret. <laughs> it wasn't a well kept secret. <laughs> and then she, um, it's kind of the cat, like the, the cascade of things that happen after that because it worked out really well for the couples. So then everybody's like, oh, she must have these like matchmaking skills and so she goes from being kind of a spinster wallflower she's 28 i've already talked about how i feel about that but she's a spinster wallflower to like suddenly people want to talk to her and her even her aunt she's kind of the penniless relation they start treating her better and yeah. they go to bath they go to bath and well, the penniless relation so there's our there's fanny <laughs> Like I said, it's got all the, it, you can pick, she's not, as, all the she's not sanctimonious, like, she's not, I like her a lot. She's, yeah, I like her. I like, she's more fun. 
he has that similitude of a sisterly relationship, the way her and her cousin Cecilia get closer. Not like, it's not quite the same, but like they definitely get closer yeah, and turn to each different other. Rom different romantic sensibilities. Mm -hmm. And then it's lovely. And I actually really like her cousin's character, Cecilia, because Cecilia mm -hmm. is just coming out. And she has this suitor who adores her. And she realizes through the course of the book that she really cares for him. But even then, in the moment, she's so worried that she's giving up all her opportunities. Like, is this the best choice? She gets so caught up in is the best choice that she almost loses him. Mm -hmm. he, he strikes me as a very tell me character. He, ooh, that's good. From North Anger Abbey. He does. He's a tell me. He is a little bit of a tell me. Because he knows what he wants, mm -hmm. and he really tries to show patience for those things. That's a little bit of Colonel Brandon, too, though, that patience. But then he gets over it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't... He has that outburst, though, that isn't... That's true, but you know what? He deserves that. He deserves to have Oh, his, no, he, he does. He deserves to have he his does. mom. He does have a mom where he's like... Well, She's been playing with him a little wash bit. Wash my hands of you. Yeah. It's well done. It I is. have to admit, I had... I did, Rachel made a comment about the language pretty early on that I thought was pretty spot on about how, um, like, it will sound Regency and then suddenly it won't. <laughs> yeah, it kind of, it's a little uneven she in timers. Yeah, she's, she writes in a very, um, like Jane Austen would in terms of describing all of these, using the kind of language that Jane would use and, um, really expansive that way. Mm -hmm. A lot of adjectives. <laughs> and, yes. um, and then all of a sudden, just like, there'll be a reflection that is so incredibly 21st century that like, it kind of, it, it kind of flings Jar you in and out of it a little bit. But I, but you know, it's definitely got the Regency vibes, like, especially yeah. when they're describing like the flirting scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're like sharing a program. At a, at a public concert yes. at one point, and they're oh, flirting. Their shoulders touch. And you're just like, <gasps> yes. <And> like, <laughs> it's 100% the hand clinch moment from mm. the 2005 Pride and Prejudice. Like, 100%. She tries. I think she tries to give you a little bit. She gives you more moments mm -hmm. of the physical that I think a modern reader That's, would be yeah. drawn to. And we're like, with Austin, you had to kind of read between the pages more. She didn't really outline those things on paper you just know that they're having these private moments especially when you're looking at like darcy and elizabeth having yeah. private moments together but like this is this idea of you know being somewhat out of the way and having those hands brush and like she writes that on the page <laughs> and it's so there. good though because you're is. just like it and you're like you smile yeah <laughs> and it is saw, like the whole time this is like, are you offering to teach me to flirt and i was like oh yeah <laughs> okay this is a pg book Oh, 100%. And this that's is a PG book. Yes, it. yes. No, it is great. It's, it's nice. It's great. It is, it is a low stakes book. It's like a really well written yeah. Hallmark movie. Oh, no. I don't know. The Hallmark movies have been. Okay. Just I delight. think it's a, it's a step above Hallmark. I would put it a step above Hallmark. I mean, it's not as. It's a quality made for TV movie. Yes. We'll give it that. Yeah. It's a quality made for TV movie. But it is, it's fun, and it was delightful, and it was an easy read. I it, I went through it relatively quickly. Well, it's kinda... we're, for books like this that are incredibly low stakes, that are just so easy reads, I mean, because you're not, I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't say that I invested heavily mm -hmm. in the outcome of these characters. Um, I found them very interesting, and I certainly was hoping for a happy ending. But oh, yeah. We were gonna get I mean, one you could tell from the cover okay. this is going to end fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so in talking about the emotional investment, nothing had me on the edge of, of my seat. And I had to come back and literally, I just read this book like a week ago. Yeah. And I had to say, okay, I have to refresh a little because I had already kind of, I finished it, went, and then it kind of just, petered out this isn't a story that I think is going to stick with you forever it'll be one like if you keep it on your shelf you look at it you're like mm, I feel fond feelings but I could not tell you for the life of me what that book mm -hmm. was about the names of the characters you would definitely have to read the back to kind of bring yeah. it bring it I back. do think it's one that like if you just like a rainy day read and you need a few minutes you might like read through for your favorite parts I think it might be one of those you'll zip through it because it is so easy if there's something exhausting about it I mean you could zip through this in a weekend it would be fine and um, also, this is a it, good holiday I would read. Say, it would be a great gift book. Yeah. Because it's not, sometimes when you, you got to be careful when you give gift books. This is my thing is like, 
because sometimes books are a really heavy emotional journey and like that's you don't always know where people are you know mm -hmm. this would be a really super safe gift book because there's something for everybody to like in that story. My mom would like this book. Yeah. You could absolutely gift this to like, especially if you've had any conversations about books. If any Austin lover, honestly, oh, yeah. would get would a little smile out of this. This would be one who enjoys those classics, who doesn't want to read anything that's violent or mm -hmm. sexually explicit or anything like that. This is not that one. If it was summertime, I would say this is a great beach read, but because it's the holiday season, this would be like a go-to. No, but it's book. England. It's cold there. So let's go yeah. winter. This winter, a, winter go-to gift book. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> no. oh sorry, I was scared. Um, <laughs> so I slammed the book little down. Face is like, excuse me, I'm right here. How dare you? Um, yeah. Anyway, but uh, this, yeah, this would be one. This would be for an experienced Austin reader or mm. somebody who has really somebody who loves in. PBS masterpiece. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is for the masterpiece. The Downton fan Abbey fan. Oh yes, that's it. Here we go. This is for the Downton Abbey fans. Have you life. seen the preview for the new movie? I haven't watched it. I read all about it, though. I read about all the Easter eggs. Oh. <laughs> Listen, so next week is the last week before uh, the holiday break for Christmas for us. So mm -hmm. we are actually going to take a two-week break from the YouTube channel. So next week will be our last video until January. And we are actually just going to be sharing with you what we're planning to read over the break. We're both kind of disconnecting and taking the opportunity to reset before we go into the new semester and the new year. So we're going to share with you what's on our to be read list for the holiday break. Um, if you're enjoying these videos, please like and subscribe. If there's a book you think we would really love based on this one or any other suggestions, please drop them in the comments. We love to get your recommendations. And if you've read either, uh, if you've read this book, let me know. I, I just want to know that there are more more of us out there just just drop it in the comments don't forget to hit the bell so that you get notified whenever we relaunch videos especially since it will be two weeks before we launch one in january after next week uh and we'll see you next time bye, bye. bye.